breaking the wall of 128 years of X-ray history. How synchrotron technology is advancing our understanding of elements. Saw Wave Lab, Ohio University and Argonne National Laboratory. On November 9th, 1989, I was watching the fall of the Berlin Wall in real time on TV from Yangon, Myanmar, my former country. It was a really exciting moment for me and remained in my heart until today. Let me start with the, uh, the X-rays. X-rays were invented by Wilhelm Röntgens in 1895. Uh, as you see, that uh, it's taken uh, his wife's hands with the X-ray, and there's a wedding ring, you can see. Nowadays, the X-rays are used everywhere, right? From the medicine, from the security, and also for the nanotechnology. How do we produce the X-rays? X-rays are produced by atoms, and inside of the atoms, this is a very simplified model of the atoms. The electrons are staying at the specific orbits. And when we provide the enough energy, we can knock out the electron. And then what happens is that one of the higher orbit electron will fill that position and then emit the excess energy as an X-rays. Now, X-rays are why it's important because when we want to know the type of the materials in the periodic table, each element of this periodic table has a different size of the atoms and different number of electrons, and they do produce different spectra. Those are the fingerprint of that element, so that if we want to know the type of element, we need to find the X-ray spectra. One way of doing that is that we can use X-ray itself to produce those spectra by exciting the atoms. We call it the X-ray spectroscopy. So much so that we even used in NASA Mars rovers uh, to determine the rocks and the soil of Mars by means of the X-ray spectroscopy. That's how we know the type of materials on Mars. The problem is that uh, we cannot measure one atom. Until recently, it's not possible with the X-ray spectroscopy. The minimum amount of the materials that we, we require in order to measure it is atogram. That's about a billion of a billion over one gram. That was the minimum but it still was about 10,000 atoms. So if we want to measure with the one atom, first, let me try to explain to you the size of the atoms. So now you see that atom, that's a real atom atomic picture, okay? And it's about 0 0.3 nanometer as a diameter. The actual size is about one billion times smaller than what you are seeing. And let me compare with me. I know I'm not two meter tall, but close to two meter. Assume that more than one meter. Yeah? Uh, it's better to put it this way, that's sideway. Now, let me enlarge both the atom and myself for 10 million times. If I enlarge the atom to the 10 million times, I got three millimeter. That is like a very small ant. If I enlarge myself 10 million times, I got 20,000 kilometers. That is the halfway around the world. Now think about that. If you are the Earth, then the atoms is the end. But we want to figure out the spectroscopy of that little end. That makes the breakthrough. So the technique that we choose it's called something called scanning tunneling microscope that already existed. It uses a very sharp needle <clears throat> uh, to scan the surface of the materials, and we can get the atomic images. Not only that, we can even manipulate the atoms, as you see in this movie, with atomic precision. The only problem is that we cannot tell the type of the atoms 
unless we know what we put on the surface. So the only way to tell is through the X-ray spectra. So we combine these two techniques. This was already done. This is not new. Uh, and the idea here is that we have scanning tunneling microscope tip. We are going to shine with the X-ray. And we are going to excite that to produce X-ray excited tunneling current. So what is this? In fact, we are providing the energy with the X-ray to the core level electrons inside the atom. And if we provide enough energy, we can excite the electrons to the higher orbitals. It's between the unoccupied states. And from there, the electrons will tunnel to the tip. Then we can detect that particular atom. That's the idea. So now, I need to show you the tip, how it looks like. So this is our real detector tip. We need to cut it off. And then, if we look at close-up image, this is actually a nanofabricator tip. And we have the real tip is this little yellow part. That's about 30 nanometer, OK? And it's coated with the silicon dioxide in order to prevent electrons hitting to the wall of the tip. And then we coat it with the gold. And of course, uh, we ground that, that gold layer. This X-ray that we use is something called the synchrotron X-ray. Synchrotron X-ray you can also find in the space, like in a supernova. That is like when you have very uh, high speed electrons or charged particles traveling with the almost like a light speed. And when they bend, they produce X-rays. Those X-rays are called synchrotron X-rays. We regenerate that synchrotron X-rays on Earth, the facilities like you see in this picture. This is the advanced photon source at Argonne National Laboratory. And here the ring is that where we have a charged electrons are speeding around. And this is about 1.1 kilometer circumference, one of the largest uh, synchrotron facilities around the world. And we have Electrons are orbiting here with 99.999999% of the light speed, OK? And that, because they are circulating, they are continuously producing the synchrotron x-rays. And we use that x-rays. Now, this is one of the uh, a snapshot picture. Inside, there is a, a tube where the electrons are circulating. Okay? Now, we have to develop the instrument at low temperature. This is the uh, instrument that the temperature is about negative 243.15 degrees Celsius, the sample temperature. And the pressure is 10 power negative 10 torr, where we basically remove the air from the, uh, the chamber. Now the strategy is that we need to use the molecule and we put the atoms that we want to study inserted inside the molecule. And we are going to find it. So as you see here, these little kids represent the molecule. And they are covering the atoms that we want to find. And this basically, now we are showing that the molecule is kind of a rotation. Very nice dance. OK. Now, we are going in with the tip close to the atom. And when we shine the x-ray, we shine the x-ray, we are going to find the atom. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> OK, so that's the strategy that we used. <laughs> and we have to choose a molecule. So we choose the molecule of the year of 2020 uh, by chemical and engineering use. The reason is that this molecule is about 5 nanometer in the size, the diameter. So that's large. 
But inside that molecule, we have only one iron atom. You have seen it, this demonstration by our little princess. And, uh, and they show that uh, the, the atom is covered by other atoms, other type of atoms uh, we need to figure out. And each ring of this molecule has only one iron atom, OK? And so we put those molecules on gold substrate. And then we shine the x-ray, as we showed you before. We position the, our STM tip, or detector tip, very precisely. And then we can uh, take the spectra. Now, these spectra are very localized. So if we position the tip at the center, which there is no molecules there, we do not see any uh, iron signature. This is noise. Okay. Now, when we position the position B, right now I show, there is an one iron atom caged inside. Now we can clearly see the signature of the iron. This is the fingerprint of the iron. Particular energy, about 7 or 9 electron volt, and there are two little hills. Just for the comparison, I borrowed this picture from uh, Wikipedia. And this is uh, probably measured from zillions of atoms. The signature, you see the two little hills. Uh, and that is what we see, also two hills. But the signature that I show here is one atom with the right it's one atom signature. The reason that two little hills is because we are exciting the electrons from the 2p 3 by 2 and 2p half orbitals, two orbitals. From the, uh, from the inside of the atoms. Not only that we can tell the type of the elements, we can also tell what chemical state it is. That is a very important, for example. If we look at the iron, we have iron 2, iron 3, and iron 4. That means that we can remove the number of electrons from the iron, two electrons, three electrons, and four electrons, for example. They are totally different, although they are iron atom, they have a different chemical reactivity. Some are friendly for the humans, some so we don't want it. So it's very important to know what type of, uh, not only the iron, what is this chemical state? We can measure that by looking at little peaks that I label 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Those energy states tell us, particularly this is an iron 2. In case of the terbium atom, just for comparison, it shows that it's a terbium uh, Three, we can also find a particular atom inside the atoms, a molecule. For example, in this case, we have a molecule, as shown here, inside there are two terbium atoms. The terbium atoms are located in number two and number nine. Or the drawing, you will see that there are terbium. I show with a little blue arrows. We took the spectra at the points one to 10, 10 spectra each spectra with 1.8 angstrom, or 0.18 nanometer distance, OK? And then you see here that we can find the terbium atom. You see the red little mountain is the peak produced by the terbium telling, hey, I'm here. And that is only in number two and number nine. The rest, we have only noise. So now we can identify individual atoms inside a molecule, which also is formed by other atoms. OK, so these previous experiments that we have done was at the very low temperatures, negative 240 something temperatures or Celsius. So the real applications if we want to do, we want to raise the temperature, measurement temperature at the room temperature. It's like our environment. And also, not necessarily atomically clean environment, because our environment is dirty. So can we do that? And yes, we can do it. What you are seeing is a special film. And this is actually formed by the type of atoms called lanthanum with the molecules. Okay, So lanthanum molecules mixed with the water, alcohol, and any other things that possible. We just put it on this substrate uh, from the liquid. Okay. And we draw it up, and then we are going to find the lanthanum atoms. So we choose our detector tip. We shine with the x-ray in one place. We actually don't see there. There is not real clear signature here. We move to another position. Again, we shine the x-ray. This time, we can clearly see. Now, 
the lanthanum signature, these two peaks tell us that this is the lanthanum by looking at the energy, because it's a fingerprint of lanthanum. <coughs> okay, I'm almost done. <laughs> All right, so what we can do, the future perspective. So our breakthrough demonstrations, we can now able to measure individual atoms and its chemical elements for we can find out the atoms responsible for the diseases, harmful elements for the environment, and also for the security. So this is the team who has actually helped me to achieve this work. I want to thank you. Thank you.